Hello and welcome back to the third lesson in learning to program using Scratch. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, The Tech Train, then hello and welcome. Um, this is going to be quite a short video uh, on this one. If you're looking at this video on the computerscience.click website, then what I'm going to cover in this lesson is something that will definitely be in the quiz at the end of this section. And of course, if you pass that quiz and you go through all the sections, you will get a certificate. Um, and that proves that you know all about programming using Scratch. So what we're going to look at today is something quite important. It's something called strings. Now, strings are normally something that you think of as uh, something you give to a cat to play with, or you tie something up with a bit of string. Uh, but in programming, string is a type of data or a type of information. And the type of data is actually the one that we have been using so far in this program that we have here. So a string is basically just text or writing. So anything which the computer will just look at and say, well, that's just some writing, that's just some words or something. I don't have to really worry about it. I'm not being asked a question that I have to work something out mathematically with. It's just simply words or symbols. And anything like that is called a string. So here we have um, three strings in the program we've done so far. We have the word hello, first of all. So we have our sprite saying the word hello. So that is a string. It is some data which is being outputted. Remember in the last lesson we looked at input and output. So it's some data or information which is being sent out by the computer and it is just simply words. And then we have uh, another bit of output here. Abby asks us, what's our name? And wait, so again, that's coming out of the program. Um, and then we have our input. We're putting in some information. And the computer is assuming that that is going to be uh, simply information that's a name. It's text, it's writing, and therefore it's a string. And it won't do anything with that other than output it as a string, as writing. And I can demonstrate what I mean by this. If I just go full screen here and I'm going to click the green flag, we have hello, first of all, what's your name? If I was to put something in here like two plus two, now you and I both know the answer is four. Um, if we have two plus two in here, she doesn't think that we're doing a mathematical uh, question here. She just says, somebody says, hello, two plus two. Uh, she assumes we've entered some information that is writing or text or a string. And so anything which is a string is just simply treated like that by the computer. Even if you were to put in something uh, like, hello, what's your name? And I say, what is two plus two? She'll just simply say, hello, what is two plus two? She'll just repeat it back to us. So anything which is just text or writing, we call a string. Um, and if we were to just change a couple of things here, so let's pull these blocks of code out here, and I'm going to get rid of them by dragging them onto the left-hand side there. So let's zoom in on that one. So if I get her to say, two plus two for two seconds and we run the program again she is just simply saying those words she doesn't treat those as numbers now that might seem obvious perhaps to some of you um, but it is a very important thing to understand in programming there are different types of data we have text which we call strings strings of or a line of characters or symbols. And as we can see on the example here in front of us, sometimes those strings might contain numbers as well. That string contains just numbers and a symbol, but it's still being treated by the computer as writing. So it's not doing anything with those numbers. They're just simply squiggles as far as it's concerned. It means nothing to it. It's just squiggles. So we've got 
strings, we've also got other types of data. And through some of the lessons later on, we'll look at some of those, including different types of numbers and true or false. So the string data type is one that we're going to be looking at over the next couple of lessons, particularly when we come to look at something called variables. Now, variables will be very important when it comes to thinking about different types of data. They're boxes, basically, and we can put different things in those boxes. And just as you wouldn't put your shoes in the drawer where you keep your underwear, and you don't put your underwear where you keep your shoes, you have different storage areas for those. Uh, you have a large shoe rack, perhaps, for your shoes, or maybe just a bed you put stuff under. Um, and underwear and clothing goes in drawers or cupboards. So you have different types of storage facilities for those things. And in programming, we also have different types of storage, depending on whether it is a string, it's text, or whether it's a number or something else. So I'm not really doing a programming uh, demonstration here. Obviously, we can see the example there, say 2 plus 2 for 2 seconds, or I could write out 2 plus 2 equals for 2 seconds. It doesn't really matter what I put in there. It's just simply going to output that as a string. So in the next uh, lesson, in, in lesson four, I'm going to be looking at variables. And when we do look at variables, just remember that word string. We've looked at a few words so far in this course. We've looked at input and we've looked at output. Now we're looking at data types and strings. And then the next video, we'll look at variables. So have a little play around with that one. Perhaps prove to yourself how thick the sprite is and it can't do simple maths. Have a little look at that perhaps and then head straight over to lesson four when we'll find out what a variable is and how we use it. I'll see you there in a minute.